itemize and specific issues. And uh, I respect uh, that which Mr. Harris had um, tried to do in substance, and we appreciate that. But at some point in time, you have to have a, a match, even in management and everything else. But that does not come in order. Uh, at this time, there's a motion on the floor. Come in. The, okay, there's a motion for the second. Discussion. Okay, go, we don't want to discuss all that long. Go ahead. We got all night. We got all night. You got all night, okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Since you're saying that what was right, what was wrong, you was wrong. Charlie Cape was wrong. How so? Charles Tankfield was wrong. How so? Simply reason. When I walked into that conference room that evening, that evening, since you want to put it out, you, Mr. Capelin, and John were sitting in there talking. As soon as I opened the door, y'all stopped talking like that. I put my pen down, ah, stood up, walked out the door. You told me, go get your boy. I started to give you an argument, because number one, I don't have no boys. I had one son, and he was a grown man. The stuff that y'all did was premeditated. I went out there to call Mr. Warren because I thought he was going to his truck. So by the time I got on the ramp, I called Mr. Fly. He said, I'm coming past the school down by the pond. Give me two minutes. I stayed outside thinking Raymond was in Mr. Harris' office. Mr. Harris came out and said, Mr. Futrell, they called him. Fly showed up. When I go in, when we get in there, you looked up and said this. It's adjourned. The board is, I mean, the meeting is still going on because you never did the proper procedure about closing the meeting. And you got up with a grin. He gone. Mr. Warren said they fired Tom. And I said to you like this, what the hell did you talking about? Because the day that you took Mr. Capron out of the building and you carried him to the store for 45 minutes, the three of us stayed there in the hallway waiting for you to come and John Stankfield come in there with a shirt with a a t-shirt, he was cutting grass. So we waited for you. You could have gave us the courtesy to do the same thing for Mr. Hurd. So yeah. yeah! 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 Yeah, why not? Yeah. It was wrong, it was premeditated, and I don't care what you say or Mr. Capel or John say. It was oh, yeah. all meditated because oh, yeah. you was, your three was in there talking. <laughs> don't tell me I saw you, Mr. Capel. Yeah, that was cow. Say you couldn't talk. I said you don't tell me. <laughs> we need some. Oh yeah, he's coming out. Uh, Can you get the mic from Charlie? We will. We will move forward. Uh, we will move forward. We will move forward. I, I would like to make it make a comment and make some clarification on this item. Is that? Uh, is that? One, the meeting was scheduled for three o'clock. Uh, according to according to Mrs. Uh, Davis' minutes, the meeting started at nine o'clock. And according to Mrs. Davis' minutes, the meeting ended at three at three thirteen. So the two minutes issue would be satisfied. So uh, we, I, I just want to clarify. But nevertheless, there is a motion on the floor, and there's a second. I'm ready to bring to the vote. I'd like to just, since you brought up the um, county administrator, the county attorney, excuse me, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make comments on that. You uh, talk about a good fit for the county, and you know, I'm not sure about your dating history, but uh, your comments about the fit for the county and how, and, and you brought this particular issue out. Uh, as a deficiency for Mr. Harris. And I'd just like to remind the board that it seems to be so critical of Mr. Harris, and he has his faults just like all of us, but I remind the board that Mr. Morrison had that same project for two and a half years, and nothing moved forward, and yet, Mr. Chairman, you fought tooth and nail to keep him here. In fact, you sent a letter to him telling him to come back to work